Hello everyone. A Gantt chart is a common tool for project planning and keeping track of individual tasks within a project. This type of chart was invented in 1910 by a mechanical engineer named Henry Gantt. There are many software tools on the market today that use Gantt charts in project planning. Gantt charts can be very intricate and detailed. Many Gantt charts have multiple levels with different tasks and subtasks. They can be dynamic, indicating real-time information, including work days, completed days, remaining days, or percentage of tasks completed or remaining. In this lesson, we're going to create a very simple Gantt chart using Microsoft Excel 2010. What I have uh, here already is some information or an example of the types of tasks that might be included in a project. Now it's important to organize your tasks in this manner. It's also important, one of the hardest things to do is figure out what tasks actually need to be completed in order for you to add them to your um, Gantt chart. In this case we have the tasks that we're going to be completed, the start date that we're going to start the task, and, and the duration, how long each task is going to last. What we're also going to do is we're going to calculate um, the end date as well, just so we have a basis for beginning and end um, in regards to date. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to calculate or create a date for the end date for each task. So first thing we'll do is we're going to hit enter or equals this date plus the duration, and that'll give us our ending date. And since we have that first one, we're going to copy this down for the rest of the dates. Now we have a start date and an end date for every task that we have in the list. If you have more tasks, you may have more, you may have less. You can certainly just keep adding tasks into your start date and your duration. For simplicity, it's very wise to place your tasks um, based on the start date in, in that order. So if you have if you end up having more tasks than I have and you have more in between, you're going to want to add those or add a row and enter those tasks in that in its respective place. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a bar chart from this information. This is going to be the basis for our Gantt chart. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select the, select the tasks as well as the titles and also the start date. Okay, now that we've done that, we're going to go up to Insert tab. Then we're going to go over the Charts, select Bar Chart. And what we're looking for is a stackable chart. We're going to have two layers on our bar chart to begin with. So we're going to use this particular one here on the two-dimensional. You could choose three-dimensional if you wanted to get fancy, but two-dimensional will work. So now we have our basic bar chart. I'm going to make this a little bigger so it's easier to see. Perfect. Okay, now we need to do some needs to do some formatting on this particular bar chart. We're going to select the data, so I'm going to right click on the chart. I'm going to select the data and we've noticed that we have already this is already has a category for start date. I want to add add more data and I'm going to title that from right here this title range. I'm going to title that the duration and days and I'm going to select this data this series of data right here and that's going to be our second set of series or set of data. Now you'll notice that we have I'll move this over now you notice that we have all of our tasks are actually our duration of task is here and then all of the start dates are here. Uh, a couple other things we're going to do we're going to actually edit our um, categories you'll notice that they're in the wrong order so we're going to change that and they're also not labeled correctly so we're going to make sure that we go over here and select the tasks and now we're sure that they're labeled correctly 
Now I'm going to select OK, and I'm going to select the data for the start date. Let's see here, there we go. Now you'll notice I have just that selected, and I'm going to format data series. And we are going to change that to fill, no fill, border, no border. And then we're going to close that. Now if I click off from it, now you'll see all of the tasks that are here. Now I'm also going to format the x-axis and I'm going to reverse the order because we're actually in the wrong order. You'll notice that we have the, the last task at the beginning. So I'm going to go up here into that format access dialog box and change the changes to reverse order by selecting that and we're going to close. Now we have what appears to be the beginning of a, a nice looking Gantt chart. Um, we don't need an, um, a legend, so I'm going to delete the legend. And we'll no, one of the things we'll notice right out of the, the gate is that um, all of our information is way over here. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to change the series of our data fields. Now what you're going to notice is that all of our, um, our range, our data range here, is all clumped together and it's caused this information in our bar chart to stick the, the task way out here. So what we're going to do is we're going to format that. So uh, we're going to first um, format the axis and I want to first arrange the numbers a little bit differently so I'm going to say, change the alignment and we're going to try to get these dates to go to a 45 degree negative angle. Now you can certainly do, you can certainly do change the direction to be horizontal if you'd like. Um, I just prefer doing a, a negative 45 degree angle. It just seems to look a little nicer. Um, but that's my preference. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go up to access options and we're going to manipulate the minimum and maximum range of the of the series um, just to limit that and make it look a little look a little better now what, what we're going to do is we're going to change the option to fixed for minimum and change it to fixed for maximum and i'm going to close this at the moment we're going to remember we're going to come back to and manipulate these numbers but we have to be able to figure out what the numeric value of each of the beginning and ending date are. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, I'm going to take and I'm going to slide this down a little bit so I have a couple of work cells to work with. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the, the start date and I'm going to place it here. And I'm also going to um, place the ending date in there as well. And okay, now um, I have that on number format, but uh, this is typically what it's going to um, look like. It's going to look like a date. Um, so, in order to get the numeric value, we're going to change the date to a number format, and now we have the numbers that we're going to place into our um, x-axis fields. So I'm going to go into format access. We, we have that set up fixed and I'm going to change the fixed number from 4,900 to 4,931. I'm click in here. I'm going to move this over. You'll notice that it's moved the data all over here. Now I, I like a little bit of space on my first task so I'm going to change that to 4930 just to create a little bit of gap. You see how that's done now? 
And on the next one, I'm going to shorten this up so we have a better, um, better rendering of what our date range is supposed to be. So I'm going to change that to the 4,990. And I'm going to click off of that. And now we have a full range here. I don't necessarily like the corners of this, so I'm going to make it a little wider. And let's click back on here. I think I'm going to change that to maybe 95 just to make sure it fits. Make sure it all fits. See, now it, now it all fits in the field. One of the other things we've noticed is that there's a large gap. In fact, there's actually 10 major, what they call major units between the dates. And I think that's probably why is to change that to make at a maximum of maybe five days instead of 10. And that'll allow us a little bit, a few more dates in there, a little bit better indication of when particular dates are. In fact, you could go using, you could go as, um, as small as three or two if you really wanted to, uh, just depending on how large you want to get your, um, how big you, your chart's going to be. The larger the chart, the more dates you can set in there and the more exacting it can be. But anyway, I'm going to close that and click off of that. Now that's basically what your Gantt chart is going to look like. Of course, you're, you're going to have a few more formatting details. Uh, you're going to want to probably put in um, task um, labels. Uh, probably going to want to put in um, some type of a title, uh, a title of some sort, and you might even want to um, say, for instance, if you have different people uh, doing different tasks, you might want to color code each individual um, task series and format that with a different um, fill color or something like that. But this is a very basic, very simple Gantt chart. They can get much more complicated. Um, many Gantt charts are going to have, say, an indication line of what the current date is, and it will show the tasks that have been completed and the tasks that are yet to be completed. Um, but again, this is a very simple, basic Gantt chart using Microsoft Excel.